Um, I'm not too sure how practical this is going to be, but let's go into the biblical text and see what the Word of God teaches us. Um, turn your, to your Bibles, please, First Thessalonians chapter 2, and we'll read from verse 7. It reads as follows, But we were gentle amongst you, like a nursing mother taking care of her own children. So being affectionately desirous of you, uh, we were ready to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also our own selves, because you had become very dear to us. For you remember, brothers, our labor and toil, we worked night and day, that we might not be a burden to any of you, while we proclaim to you the gospel of God. You are witnesses, and God also, how holy and righteous and blameless was our conduct towards you believers. For you know how, like a father with his children, we exhorted each one of you and encouraged you and charged you to walk in a manner worthy of God who calls you into his own kingdom and glory. And so, Lord, we thank you for your word. We pray that you'd open our eyes and we pray, Lord God, that we'd see you and that even as we see you and what you do in our own lives, that we in turn will do the same for others. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So I'm going to talk to you under two headings. Number one is how we ought to serve as loving parents, as believers, and particularly as leaders. And then secondly, how to show courage under fire, how to become uh, sacrificial in our giving and our serving in the midst of affliction. And so we see in this text that Paul gives us two similes. Number one is a simile of a mother. He says, we, we, we mothered you. We are like mothers to you. And then the second simile is the simile of a father. And even as I talk about this, I don't want you to think about this really as uh, that something that you need to wait to become a father in the Lord or in the Spirit in order for you to do these things. In fact, you can do fathering and mothering regardless of how old you are in Christ as it were. There is always somebody who is less mature than you and there is always somebody who is more mature than you. So in this trajectory of growth into motherhood and fatherhood, uh, you must always be receiving and also be able to give. But let me tell you uh, that in this particular text, the, the clever people, textual critics tell us that there is a textual variant in the text. So Paul says, we were gentle amongst you. And I had this solid authority from Dan Wallace, whom I re respect greatly. He says, we were like horses amongst you, one Greek manuscript says. And just on a lighter note, uh, I want to say to you, do you have any Liverpool supporters around here? Yeah. Do we have any Arsenal supporters here? Yeah. Do we have any Kaiser Chiefs supporters in this place? I saw one guy brave enough to wear a Kaiser Chiefs jacket. I don't know where you're at, uh, NK, but uh, we, we must be careful that we don't become horses amongst the people of God. So before you tell me that that particular translation was a, was a, it's not viable, it's not meaningful, clearly the original text must have been, we were gentle amongst you. But Paul is getting at something. He's not saying that we must necessarily be feminine. The, the picture is meant to illustrate some qualities that you and I as fathers in the Lord are supposed to show and demonstrate. And where motherhood is concerned, he says, we need to be gentle and we need to be willing. Isn't that a beautiful picture that he gives us? He says we were, I mean, this is Paul speaking. This is Paul representing himself, Silvanus, and Timothy. And he says, we as a team, amongst you, the church in Thessalonica, we were like a nursing mother towards you. We were, he uses words like we were affectionately desirous of you. And then he says we were ready to share. And what does he share? What is he ready to share? 
He says, we are ready to share amongst you the gospel of God and then our very selves. It's a very uh, strange expression. You don't see it much in the New Testament. Actually, I haven't seen it. Uh, normally, Paul would speak of the gospel of Christ. But here he says the gospel of God. We wanted to share with you the gospel of God. And I was asking myself, why does he say gospel of God and not gospel of Christ? And I think the answer is because he's, he's wanting to model something. He's got an agenda here. He's trying to say, in the gospel, it's not just God giving us something. It is God giving his very self to us. He's saying the triune God in the gospel gives himself to us. And he says, because we have received from God, we also gave our very selves to you. So I want to say, if you are to father the next generation, we mustn't just give things to them, not just give them experience or, or gifts or resources and things like that, but we need to give our very selves. And then another thing he says is, because you were dear to us. Isn't those beautiful words? You were dear to us. We did all of these things because you were dear to us. In other words, because we loved you. There is no other motivation that is worthy of our fatherhood of the next generation other than the motivation of love. If you don't love the bride of Christ, the people of God, you will not be able to father the next generation properly. In another place, Paul says, for the love of God constrains us. The love of God controls us. That was the motivation behind everything that he would do. So we as mothers or mothering, even you don't have to be a woman to mother people. You don't have to be a, a, feminine, a feminine person to be able to be gentle and nurturing and give, and give in to the next generation. The second simile is that of a father. We see that in verse 11. He says, we were like fathers to our own children towards you. That's how we lived our lives amongst you. And this quality of fathering has to do with charging and has to do with conduct. He says, we exhorted you, we encouraged you, we charged you. As fathers, we need to learn to open our mouths and to speak. I just remember my own natural father. Um, I'm so grateful that he would open his mouth and speak not only words of encouragement, but sometimes words of correction. I just remember one time my mother had done or said something to me, and um, I didn't like what she said. She was clearly wrong in saying what she said. And um, I don't even remember what I said to her. And my father happened to walk past, and he looked at me without saying a word, actually, he just, there was something about his face. And he looked at me and then just shook his head. <laughs> Say, and I didn't need him to tell me how inappropriate what I was doing was, however justified I may have been. So we need fathers who would learn to be affectionate, but also who would learn to become fathers and who will speak into situations. Paul says here, I charge you. And we need fathers who will open their mouths and speak. But the second thing that we need to do as fathers is not just to speak to our children as in the, in the Lord, as it were, but also we need to, um, to show them godly conduct. He says to them, you guys are witnesses of us. And he says to them, you also witness not only our competency, how we worked amongst you, but he says, but you also are witnesses of our character, how holy we were, how righteous, how blameless. And then he adds, not only were you witnesses, but also God is a witness 
of all of these things. And I want to say to us that if we are to father effectively the next generation, we need to speak to them, but we must also walk the talk. We need to conduct ourselves in a way that shows these guys how things should be done. So what are those areas of concern that, uh, just by way of summary, number one, it's the area of work. Remember that he says, we were an example amongst you uh, and we worked so that we might not become a burden to you. So not only is Paul uh, working to show these guys how it's done, the work ethic, but he's also, in a sense, I would imagine, watching them. He says, what kind of a work ethic do you have? And if we are to father the next generation, we need to look at their work. Secondly, we need to look at their walk. He's not just conducting himself in a way that is holy just for the sake of them seeing how holy Paul is, but he's saying to them, you also ought to walk the way that you have seen that we have walked amongst you. Thirdly, the area of words. You know, people don't, don't change. In management, they say that people do what you inspect. If, if you don't show interest in people's words and how they speak and what's the content of their conversations, they will not care how they speak. But as fathers, we need to say, I'm watching your work ethic. I am watching your conduct. I am watching your speech. But also, I am watching your wants. He says to them, I charge you to walk in a manner worthy of our God who calls you into his kingdom and glory. That is supposed to be our ambition. And that is the ambition that we need to inculcate, as it were, in the next generation. We need to say to them, are you ambitious to see the kingdom of God breaking amongst our communities? We need to be able to say, God, may your kingdom come. Your will be done. We are motivated by a desire to see you glorified amongst the nations, even in and through our lives. And secondly, um, and I'm watching my time here, secondly, how do you uh, respond under fire? That's another area of, uh, of, of, um, of, of modeling. We need to model to the next generation that as the uh, fathers, we are able to become courageous despite our circumstances. Do you notice that verse 7, he starts with a contrasting conjunction. He says, but we were gentle amongst you. What is he contrasting there? He's contrasting what happened to him and he illustrates it to us from verse 2. He says, you know how shamefully we were treated in Philippi. They were treated shamefully, but Paul says, despite that treatment, we proclaimed boldly the gospel of God amongst you. How do you conduct yourself when things are not going well? When the money has run out? when it seems like there is no fruit in your ministry, when you are afflicted in your life, how do you conduct yourself? Do you, do you kind of lose courage? That is a bad example to set to the next generation. We need to be able to say, things may not be going well for me right now, but God is on the throne. <laughs> and I'm going to proclaim the gospel of God boldly in spite of the circumstances that I'm in. Mean. Paul is able to say things like, I was as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing yet possessing everything. That's an incredible perspective to have. You are able to, to look at life like that if you know the greatness of our God. So I want to conclude by saying, I charge you, I charge you, my brothers and my sisters in the Lord, father and mother, the next generation. J.I. Pecker says, we shall never perform a more 
important task than that. Thank you. God bless you.